Welcome to the channel today. We talk about the Reynolds number. So in fluid mechanics, of course, there's a fundamental non-dimensional number. It's defined as the ratio between U times L and the kinematic viscosity nu of the fluid. So U is a characteristic velocity and L is a characteristic length of the system. But today I want to uh, talk about the actual origin of the Reynolds number and then in a later on we also talk about how we obtain the Reynolds number for a physical system. So let's start from the beginning. So this is actually the original paper by Reynolds published in 1883 in the Philosophical Transaction of the Royal Society of London. So if you type this in Google Scholar you can download the PDF file. So if you're interested in fluid mechanics of course this is a, a very important paper to read. So if you're familiar with this experiment, so Reynolds injected some uh, dye in a pipe flow. So here, so he was interested in uh, discovering when the flow goes from lamina to turbulent. So this is the sketch of the rig that can be seen at the University of Manchester. So that it would be good for you guys to go and take a look if you can. It's a good experience and it's smaller than uh, actually you think. So let's see what is Reynolds was actually saying in that paper. This is one sentence, quite interesting. The equation of motion had been subjected to such close scrutiny, particularly by Professor Stokes, that there was small chance of discovering anything new or faulty in them. This is quite interesting, and the two keywords are new and faulty considering how much research has been done since then. And then he goes on and try to find some non-dimensional scaling. This is quite interesting because he's already thinking in non-dimensional terms. And later on in the paper, this is the actually exactly the point in the paper where first talks about this non-dimensional number. So here, rho is the density, mu is the dynamic viscosity, u is a mean velocity of its flow in the pipe, and c is the diameter of the pipe. Not clear why uh, Reynolds uses c, it's quite interesting, but if you see, he already has the idea that the birth of eddies depend on some definite value of this non-dimensional number. Of course, it took then 20 years for the scientific community to define this non-dimensional number as the Reynolds number. Then two pages later, he goes on and discusses a bit more, more about the birth of eddies. So it's interesting because here, before going into the experimental part, he asks himself some questions. And these days it's not that common to write a paper like that. But you can see that <coughs> he's wondering whether any of these quantities relate to the birth of eddies. And in point five, that's a key question. These eddies come in at a certain value of Reynolds number. So this is quite interesting. So this is the appearance of Reynolds number. But then today, I want to talk about how to obtain the Reynolds number from the Navier-Stokes equation. So we do a scaling exercise. So to do that, we start by writing the uh, Navier-Stokes equations in dimensional form. So we have partial u, partial t. So we have the part on the left hand side that represents the convection term, then we have the pressure gradient term and the viscous forces. Okay, so <clears throat> just to explore the scaling, all we, we have to do is compare this unsteady term, for example, 
with the with the viscous term. So for simplicity, simplicity consider the flow, for example, over a sphere or a cylinder. So the characteristic length would be the diameter d of the sphere, and then we have a velocity u, uniform velocity here, and the flow has a density rho and kinematic dynamic viscosity, sorry, nu. So we can just look at these two terms, as I said. So we have a balance between the acceleration in Eulerian sense and the viscous term. So we can just take one viscous term, for example, if you are in Cartesian coordinate, we can take the partial u in the x direction partial y in the whole normal direction. So we have a second derivative. And what we have to do now is write each of these variables in non-dimensional form. So to do that we write for example u, the velocity u as a non-dimensional u times big U. Well, we know the big U is the streamwise velocity, uniform velocity that encounters the sphere of the cylinder. Then time is scaled as T times D divided by U star. And the coordinate Y is Y times D star. Okay, very good. So at this point we can take these quantities, so where we have introduced u, t and y in non-dimensional term, we substitute in the dimensional balance here, and so we have the following, we have u star divided by d star times partial u partial t and then goes to balance kinematic viscosity times u star divided by d star squared times partial u second derivative with respect of y. So if you rearrange you find partial u partial t, the balance the viscous term that now has this form. We have the Reynolds number that appears. Okay, so we define the Reynolds number as u star d star divided by the kinematic viscosity nu. So in this way, we see how the Reynolds number emerges from the Navier-Stokes equations. So this is quite interesting that Reynolds didn't do it in this way, he just did it by straight uh, dimensional analysis and by considering the um, the three, the four quantities because the kinematic viscosity can be written as dynamic viscosity divided by the density. That's it for today, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!